from my dreaming soap. Welcome to my channel. Now, I've got myself a new Prezi. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this already. So, as I've got this lovely little gift for myself, I need to make some soap. So, what is it? This is my new slab mould from Winston and Water. So, I splurged out a little bit and treated myself. It came so fast in the post. I'll leave you a link to their website if you're interested in getting this type of mould. So, it comes with a beautiful lid on it and it's really lovely solid wood. It is beautifully constructed, the sides come out for easy unmoulding and they are marked if you want to use those marks for lining up where you put any embeds on the top of your soap. If you don't want them you can either just ignore them or I guess you could just turn the sides over if, I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't want to see them or something, maybe they're distracting but I don't think that's the case. A lovely thick silicone liner. Now I haven't used this one yet so mine is just bowing a little bit away from the side. I'm hoping that after a few uses it will stick itself back. Um, it's not super wobbly but what I have just done is I've just made myself some little clips that will just solve that problem and hold it back nicely for me. Now what I'm going to do with this is you may remember if you've seen my videos before not so long ago, I did this Kiss Paw soap. And I did it as a layered soap. And at the time, I really loved the sides on the soap. And quite a lot of people said to me, why don't you make a soap, but rather than doing it as a flat soap, do it so that the sides are the main feature. So, with my new mould that I've got, I thought that was the perfect time to do that because I can still get the advantage of a nice lot of surface area for my kiss pour but what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it up to the top of the mould and then just cut them like normal tall and skinny soaps. So that way, I'm going to get the soaps that take advantage of the layers to give them the design rather than the kiss pour technique that you'd normally see on the face. Now, you could say, well, why don't you just do a normal layered soap? It is basically going to be a layered soap, but each of those layers is going to be quite patterned. And when I did it with my actual, you know, normal Kiss Pour soaps, I really loved the side on those. So hopefully these will turn out and look quite cool. Now for my colours for this soap, I really love the way that my last Kiss Pour soap was really bright and vibrant. So I'm going to go down sort of a neon theme. Now all of my neons are from Micah Mama in the UK. I've got neon yellow, neon pink and neon purple. And then I'm also going to use some electric blue and this comes from You Make It Up. And then lastly some good old titanium dioxide. And then fragrance, I'm going all traditional. Some good old loving spell from Nature's Garden. Now this is a soap that I don't have an assessment for. For those of you who don't know, I'm in the UK and we have very tight regulations on our soap and we have to get everything assessed. I do have assessments with Loving Spell in them, but just not with these colours, so I'm going to get this soap assessed after I've made it. So I need to keep an exact track of everything I'm using. Now, I'm going to muck around with my colours a little bit, so I don't really know exactly what colours I want to use. I'm sort of going to play it by ear and do it as I go along. So what I've done is I've just portioned out some of my colourants. Um, into an amount I think that's going to be enough. I sort of know roughly how much colourant I use anyway. And then what I'm just going to do for each of these is weigh the colourant and the little pot and write down what I've got in there first of all. Now this does include the pot but that's because what I want to do is after I've finished is weigh it with the pot again and then I can subtract what I've used. So I just do that for each of them. 
And for my titanium dioxide, I've just weighed my bottle of titanium dioxide. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to disperse these in some oil and then I'll weigh them again with the oil because when I get to weigh these little pots at the end, I will have dispersed them and they'll be in oil. So I'll then have to do the maths to work out how much actual mica I used. So I'm not going to video all the weighing and putting the oils and the dispersing them. I'm just going to go on with that and I'll come back when I've got that finished. Okay, so here are all my little colours that I've dispersed. I dispersed mine in some oils from my batch, but you can do that or you can just use any lightweight oil. Something like olive oil would be great to disperse them. So I've got my first little amount of oil weighed out. I've worked out how much I need for my nice new mould and I've divided it into 10 layers. So I've got one tenth of my total oil and my lye that I need for that amount of oil and also that's got my sodium lactate in it as well. So I'm just going to mix up this small batch. Now this fragrance oil is pretty good, it doesn't really accelerate very much at all, so I'm just going to pop it in to everything, just to save me measuring it out individually in a little while. And then I just want to split this up into four parts. So now I've divided up, I can now just work on mucking around with my colours and get a little scheme that I like for this layer. Okay, so with my colours now made, everything's a little bit thin still at the moment, but I want to get it in my jug, and then I'll just wait for a little while for it to just come to a bit of a trace. I haven't really got any sort of trace at the moment. So I think I'm going to pour... Yeah, I think I'm going to pour them like that.
these are really, as you can see, quite bold colours. But remember, I'm not going to see a big flat surface of these. I'm actually going to be looking at the side of these colours. So I want them to be really quite different from each other so that we can see the little side swirls coming through in each of the layers. And all I'm now going to do is just keep an eye on them and keep sort of dipping this little spatula in just to make sure I'm going to get to sort of the lightest stages of trace before I pour them. I'm being careful also, I don't want to mix these colours up, but I don't want to pour them too early because then they'll just all muddy together anyway. Okay, so I think we're at the point where I've got a little bit of trace on each of my colours. And I've got my mould here ready to go. I've given it a nice, good clean out. Um, this wasn't dirty, but obviously it's just come from a manufacturing location. So let's get it nice and clean. And then just a normal kiss pour. Now, I'm going to just do this kiss pour just in the centre, just because it's quite a tall mould and I've tried, got to get my jugs together. So remember with the kiss pour, you're just going to literally tip your two jugs together and the stream of soap needs to kiss each other as it falls into the mould. And the best thing to do is to always watch the stream of soap. It'd be nice if some of that green came out. Rather than the pattern in the mould. Now because I'm not actually going for the kiss pour technique on the top, it's the sides that are more important to me, I am just going to finish mine off because I don't really want to waste all of this soap. I am just going to finish off with these just to try and get everything in. Okay, if I was doing a normal kiss pour, where I wanted the surface of the soap to be the most important, then I wouldn't be doing this bit here. But, I want to put this in because I don't want to waste the soap. Okay, and what I did is I sort of gave it a good old wiggle as I was pouring this in, so hopefully I was going to still get a good sort of side view effect from what was going on. Okay, so there's layer one, let's just level that out. I might just give this a little swirl because I've got some colours that, you know, aren't really going through as many bars as I'd like. on the top there but remember I'm just gonna have little pieces of the top showing I want to think about the side rather than the top so for my second layer I'm just going to use one jug and just two colors because I want each layer to be quite different because I don't want them to just all sort of not stand out from each other. I do want some difference in the layers so you can actually see that they are layers. So let's get these in. Okay, 
so let's pour this second layer now. So I've had this covered up. Now how you can tell that your layer is ready for pouring on is it loses its sheen. So can you, I don't know how well you can see that, but that's certainly a lot duller now than it was, where it was quite shiny when it was first poured. So that tells us that's set up nicely enough for us to pour onto it. We still wouldn't want to drop from a great height, but that should be fine to pour now. Okay, so let's go in with layer two. I'm trying to get fairly close, but I can't get too close because of how tall this mould is. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of almost do a jumbo clamshell here. Okay, let's do some in the other corner. Once again, I'm just going to spread this out. Okay, and just make sure we're nice and even and flat. And then that can set up until our next layer.
so here's our soap the next day. So let's get it out of this mould. Now this liner is fairly stiff, which I always like with liners. I, I'm never keen on the liners that you peel back. Um, I know a lot of people do like those. I like these stiffer ones that you do have to sort of push your soap out of. There's our soap from the side. I think it's going to look cool inside. I always like to, this does feel pretty nice and dry and firm, but I always like to leave my soaps for an hour or so after I've unmoulded them just before I cut them, just to make sure these bits that haven't been exposed to the air, just to make sure that they've given a chance just to lose any sort of moisture that may be kicking around. So I'll leave that just for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and chop it all up. Okay, so let's get this cut into individual loaves. take them into individual bars. Now I chose this specific mould because I like the way it could give me um, the tall and skinny bars that I wanted. So these tall and skinnies are going to be about 6.3 centimetres wide, 10 centimetres tall and two and a half centimetres fat. So it's basically just a layered soap, but obviously it's a layered soap with all different sort of squiggly designs going through there. And overall, I must admit, it kind of looks like I've used like every micro I could possibly get and throw them all into one soap. But remember, I didn't actually use that many different micas. What I did was I just took those micas and I just mixed them to actually use them to make a variety of different colours. So we'll just have a look at this one. I'm sure you don't need to look at every single bar because I'm sure they'll be very similar all the way through. And I think it's come out as a really nice size bar. It's a decent size, give a nice size bar of soap. It basically gives the same size bar of soap when it's one of the reasons I chose it. My nurture moulds that I use, my nurture tall and skinnies, I love the size of the bar that they give. So this essentially 6.3 centimetres wide is the same size bar and I think that's just a perfect size for me. And then as normal, I'll just leave you with some pictures of the soaps. I really love the way with the slab mould that you get the great design just wrapping all the way around the bars. And I just love those corners and sides on the bars as well as the faces on them. So I am really pleased with those. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, why not leave me a thumbs up? Those little thumbs up do actually help the channel out. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or comments, then leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping.